I don't think there's a single person in this room who believes that our system is perfect right now. And I don't think there's a single person in this room who believes that most of the goals of the legislation before us are important and should be achieved in some way, shape, or form. But here's my concern. If we really look at the tenets of this bill and what it's meant to do, if we, if we ask ourselves the question, the bill, as we say, will lower cost. The bill will improve access. The bill will bring cost savings to the state of Connecticut. The bill's patient-centered medical homes will revolutionize the way we do healthcare. The final two words to every single statement in this bill are, we hope. And without that perfect storm, we are setting ourselves up and the system we intend to improve for failure. Yeah. We risk system failure because it will crumble under the weight of itself. This bill does a lot in a very short period of time. We are merging programs. We are creating an exchange. We are creating an insurance company, a state-run insurance company, which we intend to enter into competition and in many ways govern itself. We're doing all of that at lightning speed. And I even think it's important that advocates take a step back and look at that. What are we trying to advance? Are we trying to advance the goals of this legislation? Are we trying to achieve savings and improve access? Are we simply trying to advance Sustinet because it's Sustinet? I think we need to look at that. And some of the problems in the existing system that this bill could exacerbate. Very simply, one of the most important that worries me is the silent cost of health care. And that's the cost shift. Average hospital in the state of Connecticut from Medicaid get 70% of their cost in reimbursement. On the Medicare side, it may be as high as 90%. The only thing right now that is keeping Connecticut's hospitals in business is the fact that those costs are shifted to private insurers. The average private insurer in the state of Connecticut pays a hospital anywhere from $1.18 to $1.25, 125% of cost. That is what makes our hospitals whole. This bill risks making that problem worse, is to put more individuals in the state of Connecticut into a government-run program, the savings in, of which can probably only be experienced, will largely be experienced, by negotiating lower rates. We, cost, we talk about economies of scale, and that implies that we're going to lower reimbursement rates to providers. If we do that, we make the cost shift worse. And if we follow that to its logical conclusion, there will be no one left to whom we can shift cost. I think we're all hearing it from our local hospitals. It's not sustainable. We cannot continue to reimburse our providers at such low rates through government reimbursement and then bring more patients into the government reimbursement fold and expect the system to work expect access, access to be there. I think we need to take a look at that because I'm very concerned about the unintended consequences on access and on the future of our hospitals if this bill were to pass. The Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce says this won't lower cost to small business. The Metro Hartford Alliance says we can't afford it. The Middlesex Chamber of Commerce, it's too costly and it's too uncertain. CBIA, is concerned about job losses in the insurance industry. By the way, this is the state of Connecticut, and we pride ourselves on the growth of the insurance industry. The Waterbury Regional Chamber says this will lead to job loss. And the National Federation of Independent Business, the organization whose only job is to protect small businesses, says that this will not lower costs for small businesses. The people we're trying to help, the people to whom we're trying to and provide greater access to health care are telling us it won't. That should sound an alarm for us. It should sound an alarm. And yet it is, appears as though it has not yet done that. Very unfair, but I'm going to do my best to paraphrase Speaker Donovan when he said the goal of Sustinet was to corner the market on patients, 
on clients, on customers. That doesn't sound terribly competitive to me. I think the reality here is that we are trying to drive patients, as many as possible, as many lives as possible here in the state of Connecticut, to a government-run healthcare system. And some people may be okay with that. I'm concerned because I think we stand at great risk of actually weakening competition in the system. Again, an unintended consequence, but I think a very real possibility, and we should consider that. I have some concerns about the basic health program uh, for a number of reasons. You know, one of them being that the federal legislation envisions, though it does provide a carve out, it envisions that the population of individuals whom we would be serving with the basic, basic health program would actually be moved into the exchange and be put into a competitive environment where they could compete for the lower premiums. Um, that's not what we're choosing to do. We're choosing to create a new government-run program, uh, taking 95% of what the subsidy from the federal government would be. Um, to what end, I'm not sure. I'd have to imagine that we're envisioning some sort of savings that can't be realized in the exchange. Um, and my concern, quite frankly, is that it's going to be on the backs of providers. And that is that what we're talking about, while probably something that, quite frankly, is very worthwhile, is not a simple fix. We are talking about essentially reinventing the way physicians' offices provide care. No longer are we talking about show up to the office, get treated, and go home. No longer are we talking about the vast majority of clinical resources being, sent, being spent with patients in the office. We're talking about shifting so many of our clinical resources to the management of care. But I just want to conclude, you know, one of the things that we try not to do here is to find fault in something and leave it at that. Uh, I'm not going to say that there are, there are no good suggestions in this bill. There are many very good suggestions in the bill. Um, and, and something to think about as this continues to be a work in process. Uh, I, I have some suggestions, and, and I'll, I'll put them out there. Um, as I said, the timeline here is awfully aggressive. And as Representative Srinivasan mentioned, you know, these things can be done, but certainly not in the period of time allotted. Uh, it, would, it might be prudent that we stretch some of this timeline out a little bit, and quite frankly, I'm, I'm not uh, prepared at this moment to suggest exactly what those would be. Uh, and I don't do that because I know this is a work in process and we'll have plenty of time to do that, but I think it's, it's worthy of consideration. Um, another thing that actually came to mind as someone was discussing um, you know, patient-centered medical homes, and they referred to it as a pilot program in the bill. It's actually not a pilot program in the bill. It is a full-scale onslaught of patient-centered medical homes throughout the state of Connecticut, uh, a challenge that we are not at all prepared to implement. It, it, it may be appropriate that if we are going to move forward with that, and I think many people would agree that it is appropriate, um, that we do it on a pilot program basis. Uh, we are essentially putting our entire, we're putting all our eggs in one basket, and we're relying on the effectiveness of patient-centered medical homes throughout the state of Connecticut, yet we really don't have any that work right now, uh, at least not to the degree that we expect that they will. Uh, and I think, I'm sure many legislators would be more comfortable if we actually implemented in a small either geographic area or uh, area of you know, coverage that we offer right now. Um, and we discussed today a lot of things so far, and I'm sure more will come up as others have questions. We discussed a lot of things we actually do agree on. And one of the things that was discussed in 2009 was moving forward with those things that we agree on and uh, putting off those things that we don't agree on to try and come up with better, uh, more thoughtful solutions. Um, that is not to say that thought hasn't gone into this, but we do have before us suggestions from a lot of people that have broad-based support. And as the bill continues to evolve over the course of the next few months as it goes from committee to committee, it would be wise to consider those things that we do agree upon and move them forward. But asking ourselves the question again about whether those things that have generated such controversy are prudent at this juncture. Uh, so given that there is so much of that in this bill, I, I cannot be supportive today. I'm certainly supportive of many of the goals. Um, 
but uh, we are throwing out the baby with the bathwater here, and uh, we're doing it at lightning speed, and I'm very concerned that we haven't really thought it through as completely as we should, and that we have you know, no evidence that it'll actually work. So I thank you for your time.